evening with Shire. This is this is my uh, one of my first worst police encounters. Um, let me take you way back, back in the day. I lived in Lakewood, California. I was like maybe 19. In Lakewood, California, now that's a place that's famous for being boring. It actually got like most boring city in California. It's claim to fame is Denny's. The Ooh. diner Denny's, wow. now yes. that was the most exciting thing in Lakewood, California. Awesome. Hey, Denny's is pretty exciting So why do you leave? Right. Like five in the morning. A lot, of, a lot of great nights ended at Denny's, you know. Um, but this great night started at Starbucks. Um, and I was, I was chilling at Starbucks with a couple of my friends, a couple of gentlemen. They're, they're both named Sean, for, so for the purpose of the story, I call one of them Shonda. That was his actual nickname. All right. Now, Sean, he says, hey, guys, I got a great idea. You're going to love this because we're bored out of our minds. We need a great idea. So we're like, what, Sean? And he says, I know how to build a combustion cannon at Home Depot for, like, $10, under $10, we can do this, we can have a great time. We're sitting here in like suburbia, like California, and we're like, dude, that's a great idea. Let's, let's do that. So we, we get in uh, Sean's uh, truck. Now his truck is a, a stick shift, which is important to the story. These are all very important details, by the way. And we get in this truck and we drive over to Home Depot. Um, I, I tried to call my best friend, Bruce, and, and, and say, Bruce, you should come with us. Now, the truck only seats three, and what Bruce would have done is he would have gone under the tarp in the back of the truck, this big blue tarp, and we, we've done that so many times. Tarp. Like, in, in, under the tarp, you know, on the highway, driving places, because we can only fit three people in this freaking truck. Uh, now, under the tarp are a bunch of, like, uh, uh, parts, like PVC pipe and stuff, because Sean had an irrigation company. Uh, so, you know, it's, it, we're, we're driving to Home Depot. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. And Sean is running through the aisles, grabbing stuff, sawing stuff, you know, putting stuff together. And he builds the most beautiful uh, combustion can. And he finishes it in the parking lot, of course, because he doesn't want the Home Depot people to know what we're doing. He buys the stuff, we leave. And we're in the parking lot, and he shows us. And now it's, uh, let me try to pantomime this. It's about this long. And you unscrew the cap on the back. Uh, and there's two nails, two nails drilled into this larger combustion chamber. You spray in some really cheap Aquanet hairspray. It's got all the good flammable shit in it. And, uh, and then you screw the cap back on. You click a little button on the outside, which makes a spark go between the two nails. And then boom. Now that sounds amazing. <laughs> it sounds real loud. Like a freaking, like a 22 or something. Like boom. And we're chilling. We're chilling in the... Uh, in the Home Depot parking lot, and Sean's like, you know what, I think I have some black spray paint and with my tools and stuff, let's spray paint this black, that's a great idea. And we're like, dude, that would look sick! And so he spray paints it black all in the parking lot, and then uh, we go, we get the Aquanet hairspray, and then Sean's like, no, we gotta go someplace where like there's not gonna be a bunch of like homes and shit, so like, people are gonna complain about us. So we drive to this like, like uh, um, industrial area that's like really like shady and it's like already dark out it's like maybe 8 9 p.m 10 p.m and uh we drive down this long winding alley towards the back of the alley where there's a bunch of construction so you can't get out the back way and you can't really see the street so we're kind of secluded you know next to this like complex whatever this is chain link fence and uh they start testing it, and they start like just boom, boom, and it's amazing. It's so much fun for like you know a minute or two, and then I'm bored out of my mind, and I got these two idiots, you know, playing with the freaking cannon, and I'm just kind of hanging out near the truck, like oh wow, this was you know this was cool. It's you know first now I know how to build a cannon, but like I'm bored, and I just want to go home. And I, in case you haven't noticed, I have really, really terrible eyes. Now. I looked towards the street side of the alley and I saw what looked like a person peeking out at us from like around the corner of this building and then going back. And I was like, did someone, hey guys? And I start calling out to my, my buddies, but they didn't hear me. Now, I had the distinct and correct feeling that we were being watched. <laughs> Surveil. And a couple minutes later, they're still playing with the cannon. They're trying to shoot a hot sauce packet out of it. Um, which, I mean, seemed like a great idea. You know, of course. And then I hear it. Um, the sound of a helicopter. 
<laughs> and I look up, and there's a flashing red light and a flashing blue light oh, right next to it. Nice. And I remember saying out loud, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> just as I said that, just as I had that thought and said it, a big spotlight shone down right on Sean's truck. <laughs> And um, <laughs> I was just frozen. I was just standing there. Sean tries to do this thing where he's like, oh, no, I'm just going to pretend I don't see it and like tie my shoe right now next to my truck. And it just looked terrible. It looked like he was like arming himself with the explosives. And Shonda tried to hide under a tree, which if you knew how tall Shonda was and how sparse the tree was, you would laugh too. It was, I was, it was so funny. We bugged him about that for so long. And then Sean has his final and best idea of the evening. He says, hey guys. Shoot it. They haven't said anything to us on like a megaphone or anything. Yeah. Let's just drive away. And we're like, Sean, you've outdone yourself. This is a great idea. Let's all climb in. So I'm, I'm in middle seat. You know, Sean's driving. Shonda's here. And Avenged Sevenfold is playing on the radio as we're slowly driving up this winding alley, trying to get to the street or somewhere. I don't know. And we get pulled over after driving like two feet. By a helicopter. By two SUVs and five sedans. We get pulled over by like half the police force. Um, and <laughs> I'm just freaking out. You know, I, I've never seen a cop block video at this point. I, do, I don't know what to do. I'm like, we're gonna die. Um, so I'm sitting there and we're, we're all sitting there and they, they tell us the whole spiel. Now they've got a megaphone. They tell us, you know, put our hands on our heads and they're running the plates and they're taking their sweet time. It's like 10 minutes, it seems like a year. And Sean keeps kind of squirming and trying to see them in the mirrors. And um, he's, he points out, he's like, guys, they have guns trained on the car. They have these big, like, look, look like bazookas to me, trained on the car. And they tell him to stop moving, and he keeps squirming, he keeps squirming. And I, they say this, and I distinctly remember the, the, this is the exact line. Stop moving or the bullets will go through you. <laughs> Wow. That is what they said to us. Wow. Damn, stop moving after that. Um, and so then they, they pull us out of the car one by one, and they do the whole, like, instruction thing, you know, uh, stand up, you know, put, put your uh, hands in the air and walk ba out backwards facing away from us, then lift up your shirt so we can see your waistband and turn around once, and then walk backwards towards us, like, slowly. <laughs> and we're all like, yeah, sure, you know, we'll just go along with it, and, you know, no trouble there. We get put in the back of separate cop cars because they have so many. Um, and they do this like divide and conquer tactic. Uh, we all get frisked. Um, I was the only guy that got frisked by a guy. The other two got frisked by this little tiny lady cop who ended up being the craziest and the one in charge. Um, they put me in the back of a cop car. Um, I'm sitting there cuffed. They've taken everything out of my pockets. They've taken my shoes. Um, which I didn't know they did that. They took my shoes. And... Uh, and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to them talk about us because they left the radio on. <laughs> I'm listening to them like go through like, we're sweeping the alley now for shells. I'm like, what? For shells? Oh, they think we have a gun. You know? And um, they asked me before I got into the car, they're like, are we going to find anything in that car? Are we going to find any weapons in that car? I'm like, no, you're not going to find anything. You know, I don't, I, I don't know anything at this point. I'm, I'm a kid. Fuck. And... Um, they, uh, they're searching, they're ransacking the truck at this point, and I'm watching, they're just throwing stuff out, and like all this pipes and stuff, and um, they actually at one point picked up the combustion cannon, which was thrown in the back with all the pipes, and I saw one guy looking in the pipe and clicking the button. <laughs> it didn't go off, luckily. Or unluckily, I don't know. Depends on your brand of anarchism, I suppose. <laughs> So, they're doing all that. While they're doing all that, little lady cop sits in the front seat. And she decides to do good cop, bad cop on me by herself. <laughs> so she starts off real nice. She's like, look, I just need to know if there's anyone hurt back in that alley. That, you know, so I can go help them. So, 
I just need you to tell me how many how many rounds did you fire? And I'm like, well, we didn't fire anything. You don't know what you're talking about. And then she just instantly the bad cop. She's like, no, you're gonna be in big trouble. You don't need to tell me. You need to tell me how many shells we're we gonna find because we're gonna find them. And uh, I'm, I'm just climbing up. And I'm not telling you. You know, I'm like, I, I didn't really say. I'm not telling you. I just I just climbed up. I didn't say anything at that point. I don't know, maybe somewhere in the back of my head I saw something that said, no, don't talk to police or something, and that kicked in at that point. And then, then, I'm sitting in the back of the cop car, and I hear the cops clapping. And I'm like, what? Why are they so happy? And I see one of them pulling out a shotgun from Sean's truck. A, a shotgun! And I, I'm like, oh yeah, Sean had that shotgun that he showed me that one time. <laughs> and yeah, sure enough, yeah, he care he keeps his shotgun in his truck in California. Um, uh, like all sensible people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, and so the, as they're interrogating us and stuff, the, and uh, the cop the, the cars are slowly going away. Oh, it was really funny too when they were pulling us out of the car. At one point, they said, "Person in the back of the truck, please exit the truck." Like just in case there was a person back there, and that would have been Bruce had he not been a good boy and did his homework that night. Um, so. They put us all, then they put us all into the same car. Now, this is, of course, like the, the tactic that they do, because of course they have recording devices in their cars. Of course they want us to talk and, and get our stories straight when we're together. And I had no idea. So I sit in the car, and Shonda, who I guess wanted to become a cop later in life and so knew this, he's like, don't say anything, they're recording us. Like the second I sat down, I mean, he saved the day because I was about to be like, what did you guys tell him? I told him, you know. You know. <laughs> and um, so we're all sitting there and they pull Sean out of the car after a little while. And then they tell us, they're like, we're going we're gonna to keep Sean overnight uh, in a cell. And they were charging him with a concealed weapon shotgun, which I'll get to that later. And uh, they let me and Shonda out and they're like, yeah, you guys just go home. He, uh, Sean said you could take his truck, you know, here's his keys. And then we both realized we didn't know how to drive stick. <laughs> so the aftermath of that is Sean got um, NRA to back him in a court case against the cops because wow. there is no such charge as concealed weapon shotgun. <laughs>